Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all awesome. Today's video is going to be about celebrating excess and the gear that I love because I'm going to show you the rack that I have just built for my home studio here. I'll do another video detailing the rest of the rig here because I got a new desk, I put the rack together with some cool gear, and I'm having a whole bunch of fun with it. So let's dive straight in. Okay, here's the rack. The heart of it is this Sound Sculpture Switchblade GL, a big Big shout out to my buddy Charles Scott at Bad Robot who appeared on the Gear Podcast and was raving about this. One of these came up recently. I managed to grab it and it's basically let me use all this awesome old rack stuff with the more modern stuff like my Apollo X8 and my Axe FX over here. Just an incredible switching system. The idea is that there's 16 inputs and 16 outputs and you just plug all your gear in and then you can route anything you like into anything else you like. It's so cool. There's a software editor for it where I will show you how to build some patches and show off some of these sounds. The other pieces are, well, there's one of the cheap Furman power strips, just a kind of glorified power board, UA Apollo X8, Axe FX3. We all know what that one does. Then the mighty TC2290. There is a Lexicon PCM70 in there, the Sony DPS-M7 hugely, hugely underrated rack powerhouse, the Eventide Eclipse, and at the bottom, the incredible Eventide H3500. So it's the same as the H3000 with the sampling card in there, which I honestly never use. There's also a patch panel on here to add a few inputs, such as this pedal board that I have down here, a bunch of awesome mod effects from past effects here in Australia, the Crazy Tube Circuit, Cyclone, Time, and Splash, and then the awesome Jam Pedals Delay Llama. This is on one of those uh, small Nuex pedal boards as well. So a whole bunch of stuff. The Switchblade is so awesome because it makes it so easy to route all this stuff conveniently. And I don't have to go and recable a bunch of stuff. I can just have fun with it, dial up presets. And, you know, honestly, I probably use the Axe FX 85% of the time anyway. It is so good, but sometimes it's nice to just plug the 2290 in and dial in presets on it using the keypad or, you know, fire up a random preset in the Eventide and get inspired. The circular delays in the PCM70 are great, but I honestly probably use it for the rich plate reverb the most. And the DPSM7 has this amazing spiral delay patch in there. The chorus and pitch shifting in that is awesome as well. So I'll show you the editor and we'll make some sounds. I'll show you how I would create a patch from scratch using the software editor for the Switchblade. The main screen on here lets you just kind of set your unit up and you've got your inputs and outputs listed. You can set the trim levels over here. You can set the status of the relays and the controller setup. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is just navigate to the presets tab over here. I'm gonna select an empty preset, like say this one over here, number 18. All right, all I've got over here is a list of the inputs and outputs. So the first thing that I want is I'm plugged into the Switchblade. I want my guitar to go into input one of my Axe effects. So there's my guitar, there's my Axe effects. I'm just gonna connect those up. Here's what the Axe preset looks like. Pretty straightforward amp, cab, and multiband compressor over there. Now I can just play guitar on my Axe effects. <laughs> Let's say I wanted to add some parallel effects to this. What I've got is I've got the Axe FX going via SPDIF to my Apollo. So here's the Axe FX channel. And then I can take a send from my Axe FX channel in the Apollo back to the Switchblade. So this is the input that I've labeled Apollo. Let's drag it over here. Let's say I want to add the TC2290 to this patch. So I'm going to take the send over here and I'm going to connect it to the input of the 2290 over there. Now what's cool about this is I can set the overall gain level on here. So let's say I bring this down to about minus 12 so I don't distort the input of the 2290. Then I can take the 2290 outputs which are in stereo and I can either route them to their own channel on the Apollo or I can route them to input number three on the Axe FX. Let's send them to their own input on the Apollo because then that way I can record the wet signal separately to my dry signal. So we've got output R and output L over here. I will just quickly cable these up. And again, I'm gonna set the overall effect level in here. Let's select 
This one, I'll say set it maybe to minus nine, so it's not too loud at the moment. I think I've just got like a panning dynamic delay set up at the moment. You know, TC2290 things. Let's hear this combo now. <laughs> If I wanted to add another effect to that, again, either in parallel or series, I can do that pretty easily. Let's say I wanted to add my pedal board to this entire setup over here. So I'm gonna have to route a few things a little bit differently. I am gonna go from my guitar input over here, instead of sending it straight to my Axe Effects, I'm gonna send it to my pedal board over here. So I will drag out the label called PB. So I'm sending all of my guitar signal to the pedal board. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna send the pedal board, which is actually set up in stereo to input three on my Axe Effects. So let's do this. Let's take the pedal board inputs, which are placed over here, PBR and PBL. I can also clean this up really easily just by kind of dragging things around. So it's a little less confusing. So we'll take this part of it over here and I will then send this to input three on my Axe Effects. So Axe 3L and Axe 3R. Let's connect those up. So I'm gonna go PBR to Axe 3R and PBL to Axe 3L. Alrighty, what I've got to do now is obviously in my Axe Effects route that accordingly. I've actually already got a preset set up to do that. I've called it Switchblade Pre. <laughs> The third patch on here, you can see very similar routing again, guitar to Axe Effects, Apollo, this time to the PCM 70. I'm on the rich plate algorithm. I love this one because it just sounds like, you know, the late 80s, early 90s Queensryche and Lynch Mob records. <laughs> Of those units only have a mono input on them. Units like the H3500 need a stereo input in there. So one nice thing about that is if you set this up, you get these kind of stereo pairs here, which visually makes the routing look a lot better. I've just got the classic preset number 231 stereo pitch detune on here. This sounds massive. <laughs> The Eclipse I've set up on the Manifold beta program just because I haven't really heard anything else like it. And I like this for kind of sound on sound stuff.
Okay, that loop is pretty much gonna go on indefinitely, so I've just knocked the level of it down. What would be nice would be to process some of that with, say, some of the reverb from the PCM70. So let's build a patch doing that. I am going to drag over the input for the PCM70 over here, and I'm actually just gonna sum the outputs of the Eclipse into it. So pretty straightforward. You just kind of drag and drop over there. And as you can see, you got some nice little visual displays on there. I can move this, say, up here. Then I'm going to take the outputs of the PCM70 to my main output left and right. So I need to get PCM70R and route it over here. I'll do that in just a second before it starts making some noise. And then PCM70 left. That one will go over there. And you know you can make this as clean or confusing as you like with the routing. Let's hear that now. This patch is designed to integrate the pedal board into the setup with a stereo pair of amps in my Axe FX. So the Axe preset looks like this. You can see the stereo pair of amps panned hard left and hard right with a stereo cab in there, which works quite nicely. Now, in this case, I need the guitar to go to the pedal board first. So I've just routed it like that. And then the stereo outs of the pedal board are coming back to the stereo ins, input three left and three right on the Axe FX. I've got some really fun stuff on here, some really, really lovely analog modulation and delay on here. Uh, it's a really, really hard choice between the Past Effects CE1 clone and their Electric Mistress clone. So I'll let you hear the CE1 and then I'll stack the Mistress on top of it and then we'll hear some of the jam pedals Delay Llama. <laughs> Now, of course, if I wanted to add some extra processing to that, I could play, say, the Eventide Post. So I'll pull the Apollo over here. I will pull the H3500 left and right outputs over here. Let's route that to both of them. Again, because whether you're running in stereo or mono, the H3500 needs both inputs active. And then I will take its outputs. I can either send them back to the Axe FX I actually don't want to do here. I don't want to create a feedback loop. So I'm going to take them to the main outputs over here. We've got output L and we've got output R. Let's just route those in and add some glorious detune to all of this. And then maybe I'll let you hear like one of the kind of many glorious reverbs in the H3500. <laughs> One of my favorite rack pieces is a highly underrated Sony DPS-M7. There's a patch on there called Spiral Delay, which is just its own unique thing. It's so spacious and lush. I'll just let you hear it. You can see I'm going uh, guitar to the axe and then the Apollo. This one's labeled SPX because I had my SPX-90 in there for a while. I've swapped it out for the M7 and then SPX left and right. Again, that's the M7 outputs on there going to the main outputs. I'm gonna change that routing in just a second, but I'll let you hear this amazing spiral delay patch. <laughs> Now, 
let's say instead of having that go to the Apollo, which again is kind of my preferred routing because if I'm gonna record with this, then I can have a separate track for just the wet effects. I could send this straight into my axe effects if I wanted to. So I've just kind of changed my main axe patch up a little bit. We'll get rid of those blocks. The axe patch, as you can see, same stuff, but the multiband is going to output three, which I can route to any of the effects units. And then input three is coming back to the grid. So I'll throw on a block after this delay. What I need to change here is also to not take the Apollo output from there. I'm going to take the output from the axe effects. So output three, that will go to well, the SPX. It's the Sony unit on there. And then the Sony's outputs are going to go back to input three on the axe effects. So I've got axe 3L and axe 3R. I'll connect those and we should be able to hear pretty much exactly the same thing. But then if I wanted to add some post-processing to the delay part of it, I can do that. <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, basically, in conclusion, this setup is not necessary. It's pretty over the top. It's mostly because I like collecting some of these old pieces and I find them inspiring as well. When I'm working, like I said at the start of the video, probably 85, 90% of the time, I'm just going to use the stuff in the Axe Effects because it is incredible. Absolutely incredible. You can do so many of those things, but there is something to be said about pedals or rack units where you have particular patches in them or particular sounds or just a tactile user interface. So that's why I do it. I don't really feel like I have to justify it. You know, guitar is something that I do because I love it. I do it because I do it for a living and make money out of it and also do it as a hobby. So, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> three main things in my life all happening at the same time. I'm sure a bunch of you feel the same way. So why not let me know what you've got in your setups at the moment and if you've kind of come across a game-changing piece of gear like the Switchblade that has changed how you work. I should mention as well, I saw Morningstar just came out with a Matrix router, which I might have to check out as well. It's like I had the Switchblade for the rack and the Morningstar for the pedals and I could route anything into anything else. And it's giving me a headache now just thinking about it. Have a great day. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I'll see you next time.